It's time to start Dish and Days with your host, Tony Moore, Michael Mattis, Justin Lee Harold, and Araceli Avales. And now, let's dish. Hey everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome to Edition Days where we give you a full recap. Are we going live? My thing isn't on. We're live. Okay, yep. sorry. <laughs> it always throws me off when the, um, cause I have another browser open and it doesn't, it usually plays it when we're live. So there must be a delay. Mm -hmm. It usually was on as the credits are going. Anyway, welcome to Edition Days. <laughs> we give you a full recap of this week's um, Peacock's award winning and there it goes. Award winning. <laughs> <laughs> award-winning number one daytime drama and current 11-time Emmy nominee, um, which we were talking about. Just, just big, big congrats, but we will get into that a little bit later. But in the meantime, you can follow us on our socials. We are Dish and Days on Facebook, at Dish and Days on Instagram, and Dish and Days on X and Threads. And if you are watching us on YouTube right now, you can do us a favor and please subscribe. Hit that like button for us. Um, really does help. And hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we drop new content. And if you're not watching us on YouTube, you can definitely listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio as you go about your day. And last but not least, you can check out our former co-host, um, James Lott Jr. on JLJ Media. On his YouTube channel, he covers the sort of rest of the soap flock in addition to his original audio dramas. So go check him out on JLJ Media on YouTube. And initial thoughts, everyone? What did we think of this week's Days of Our Lives? Well, first, we want to say, <laughs> even though Tony is not here, we oh, yes, have sorry. the presence of, of, of uh, Mama Moore. Uh, I'm Mama Moore. Yeah. <laughs> and Mama she Moore. made it in without Tony's help. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Mama Moore. Happy I think she's getting the hang of it as lately. usual. Yeah. <laughs> and she's been early too. She's yeah. on it. Yeah. Tony is off today. We're not yeah. really sure what he's doing, but uh, he had plans. So yeah. You Check know, out his socials. I think he having a life. Just um, <laughs> uploaded some new things. So yeah, he's he's off. I was he completely convinced that Beyonce it. was like coming to Coachella, like a surprise oh, Coachella, was. but yeah, I don't know. So if it wasn't her, then what was it? Cause that was a pretty big truck that rolled by. It was probably just a, I think it was just a, an ad. An yeah, ad I think it was maybe. Oh, okay. Or the, or the Coachella people realized they needed to pull something because this year was kind of a, she was kind of a dud. <laughs> yeah, I have you some wouldn't. friends here. We wouldn't know it from so. all of the headliners, or maybe it was just too many headliners and not enough. I don't know. I know it from the amount of traffic that's still in Los Angeles these oh past God. two weekends. Yes. Like usually it clears out, and these past two weekends have been insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mama Moore is calling Tony right now. Oh no, he's he's, <laughs> he's like, where's he at? <laughs> I think he's he's hosting. So I think he actually just posted before we went on air about something he's doing. So oh. go check out Tony's socials after you watch us. Um, after you watch us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, what did you guys think of this week? It was a bit, bit, bit decent week. Um, can some some I think I I told you before the show there were just some some things that like wrapped up very quickly that I was kind of surprised about. But um, you know we'll go into that. But it wasn't a, wasn't a bad week. It was a kind of a head scratcher week for me. And when I say head scratcher. The, you, this is the indication that I'm drinking tea because if I had a martini in my hand, uh, head scratcher wouldn't be the words I would be using. Oh, wow. Okay. I actually like this week. I feel like they're, they're starting some plot lines this week. Um, mm -hmm. wasn't, I wouldn't say like an info week, but I feel like, um, we got a little progression on some things and I feel like they're like, they're teasing us about some other things that I think are going to happen or going to come to fruition, um, which I think might be interesting. So that's what got kind of got me excited this week where I was like, oh, they're going this way with it. I didn't think mm. they were, they were going to go down this road, but they might. So, yeah, yeah I thought it was Yeah, good. definitely some things started this week. Yeah. Right? You know, some things were like, oh, OK. And then other things you're like, girl, why? Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Unfortunately, I do not have any Days of Our Lives tchotchkes or an hourglass that I can flip. But here, I have my old notary yeah. stamp 
<laughs> we can put yes. that over. <laughs> it expired in 2022. Uh, but we'll use that. As a... Here, I'll put it upside down. <laughs> All right. So, what do we start? It's time to start. Three, two, one. <laughs> We did that. Dishing days. Dishing days. Dishing days. I did it backwards, but Jesus. yeah, I was gonna say what was that? Oh, we, we really got to record that, and this bit is getting old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're starting with our first um, topic, first storyline here. This one is brothers in blackmail, mm. and this one is a little bit. This one is the Holly Tate, Teresa, Brady, Nicole, EJ, Steph, and Kristen, with Chad and Xander also in the mix here. So what do we think about brothers and blackmail? Uh, I was annoyed at first because I was like, oh God, we're this this cat and mouse shit with EJ and Stefan is just old. Now at least it's a little more compelling than it was previously when they were just drugging each other and playing yeah. stupid games. Um but I but now that Kristen is in the mix, I'm like, okay, I'm willing to see. I'm willing to see where this this goes because Kristen's kind of been, you know, qu quiet for Kristen. And so <laughs> this is an opportunity to kind of bring her into the the back into like the family fold, so to speak, and in the Demira enterprises of it all. And, you know, no one. So I don't think anyone's surprised that EJ did what he did at the press conference because he that's uh -huh. that's EJ. He's an a-hole. Like, of course, he's going to start it before the pre a press conference. He's going to start it before the press is there and then just kind of breeze through it yeah like i i guess the, i guess i sh should be more surprised that he did that um or or i guess i no, that's the wrong way to say it. i i was surprised that yeah. he did that and i guess i shouldn't be uh yeah that was oh that was such a weak tea that was such a cop out um mm -hmm. i'm disappointed i really am if i was like Honestly, if I was Brady, I I wouldn't have let that slide. I would have been pissed, and I would have been screaming at him in the middle of the square. Yeah, I was kind of surprised there wasn't more of a, a, a visceral reaction from Brady. Like he had that he had a reaction, but then it just kind of like veered off. Like we like we veered off to like Nicole and Chad, and Nicole yeah. and Chad were very interactive with each other, which I was kind of. That threw me off a little bit because I don't remember them ever having, unless I missed something, I don't remember them ever having like a, a close relationship or anything, but they were they were kind of talking like old friends. And I was like, okay. Well, they, they sort of started that during the wedding mm -hmm. when they like talked a lot during the wedding when her and EJ were getting married and Chad was the oh. best man. Like they had those few scenes where they, she was like talking, him, talking to him about Abigail and he was talking to her about... Um, I forgot about those. No, it was, it was, it was yeah, yeah. Those, I feel like they that was sort of like a precursor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was so disappointed in EJ. Like I was, well, I was like enraged by him when like it was starting. I was like, oh come on, this is like EJ's chance to like really do something good or like make up for like his his stuff during this past storyline. And he, I feel like he's due for a comeuppance. I mm -hmm. feel like we're we're itching toward him really like landing flat on his ass because what was it who brought it up um was it stefan who was like if nicole finds out that mm -hmm. you know about the drugs mm -hmm. and that was a that was the thing i didn't i guess i didn't even like think about that i just always thought about like okay she's gonna find out that i went to you and i told you about it but i didn't i wasn't making the connection of if she finds out you knew about the drugs weeks before holly od mm -hmm. and, then that's going to be a real sticking point in your marriage. And when he brought that up, I was like, oh, yeah. That's yeah. It, it, and, and so much has happened. And the fact that these stories are, are kind of drawn out long term now, it's mm -hmm. like I'm forgetting certain tidbits. So those are those are good reminders. But I had to chuckle. I think it was this week. It was either this week or last. It must have been this week because he was like, my blackmail trumps your blackmail. Oh, yeah. I, was like, yeah. I was like, oh, Lord. Okay. And I was like, hey, <laughs> was it? I my was like, dick's bigger than your dick. Okay, yeah. great. And, I mean, it is the Demera uh, way. It is the yeah. Demera way. Yeah. And Stefan, like, Stefan is just, I don't know. I just cannot get on board with him being like a, a devious Demera. You know what I mean? Like, EJ, yes. 
but Stefan like and he he's like trying too hard you know what I mean yeah. it, it and it's just I'm, I'm not buying it but let, let's because see what he's it's the it's the fact that he is he's got the devious demara streak but he didn't learn because he never met Stefano he never learned mm -hmm. at the hands of the man who perfected the craft mm -hmm. yeah, so true. his so his planning and his gut instincts are right on are right in there in line with his siblings but it's the follow through <laughs> The execution. That it's the execution <laughs> that he always gets wrong. And I said this in the beginning where it's like he could have he could have saved himself so much freaking drama and could have earned himself so much more loyalty if he'd gone to the other brother for help. Mm -hmm. Had he gone to Chad in the very beginning with all when all of this mess started, his life would be completely different right now. He never would have had to give up Demira. He would have gained an ally in Chad. Chad probably would have been able to get EJ on board, and they would have. This would have wrapped up so much quicker. Yeah, it's always yes. his. He just has such poor execution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like Stefan's like quote unquote devious, but he's not on the like Demira level where it's sport or he grew up doing it to, you know, his his bread and butter isn't sort of backstabbing and and cheating people out of things yes. and that sort of a thing. Um, it's just sloppy execution. Kristen yeah. and EJ Kristen and EJ have it, you know, even yeah. though Kristen's not blood, she she's got the Demira way. Yeah. I, I think of Kristen and EJ as two halves of Stefano. Yeah. Where EJ handles the business side <laughs> and Kristen basically hand, has her hands in the cookie jar of all of the evil experiments and Dr. Rolves and illegal things that <laughs> Stefano did. I was going to say, if anyone's like Stefano, it's Kristen. She's the one who oh. takes after him the most out of all of the children. Like, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> with the, but with the exception of business, because Stefano had a, had, was yeah, a very I mean, interesting person in the way he, he was able to balance the two and use one to fund the other on separate on different occasions. Uh, but Kristen, want, Kristen has always wanted the power, the legitimate power, but she's never been able to qu quite wield it in the same so, way that her brother has yeah i think with the business that they never that was never Kristen's thing and they never okay. made that part of her like there's been times where they've dabbled with putting her in the business and she's worked in things like that but not that was never her bag or you know mm -hmm. strong okay. suit kind of a thing i feel like that was always like an ej thing specifically like chad he, we got a little bit of it years ago but that's i feel like that's not even that was never even chad to begin with it's mm -hmm. always sort of been like EJ and and maybe Tony some I mean, at certain part parts in the beginning, but yeah, but yeah, this yeah. is I, it, he's and then the stuff with like Harris and um, Ava, he was like taunting them about it, and it was like EJ, like you've you've got too many enemies around you for this, like exactly. Like, calm down, chill out, <laughs> like eat a little humble pie and try and make amends and, or keep these people at bay because they will give you trouble, whether it's Harris and Ava, whether it's Kristen and Stefan. But can I tell you, this was the first time in Harris's entire run that I finally saw the Steve Burton that I know. He needs a foil. Hmm. He can't huh. just... He, he is... I'm sorry, but... I've, I've known Steve Burton's acting for a long time. He's always been a guy that works well when he has somebody to play off of. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not talking about it as a romantic lead. Yeah. He, he, it, it, that's not the way that, that he is built. He needs a good foil, somebody to go one-on-one -on -one in a scene with. And that scene that he had with EJ, that was the first time that I really saw him like, this is what I know him to be capable of. Yeah. Why are we, he's been on, on the main show for almost a year now. Why are we mm -hmm. now just getting this? This True. is, this is the Harris that I wanted to see. This is the Steve Burton that I, what I know is capable of. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully that's what they're setting up maybe to get them to sort of entrenched because they haven't had outside of um, Harris working with Ava in like Ava and EJ's conflict. I don't think EJ and Harris have ever been 
but yeah, they haven't had many scenes together or been at odd or had plot lines that crossed. To, and that's the, and I, I swear, I think that's the biggest problem is, is that they've isolated him so yeah. much and <laughs> his most dynamic scenes have come with, with either a foils or um, that's like, like that scene, was it last week or the week before that he had with John? Of, um, mm-hmm. where they were talking about their shared trauma that w- that came completely out of the blue, but it was such yeah. strong mm-hmm. material. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I remember that being kind of being a highlight that week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the stuff with Kate months ago, where they were mm-hmm. setting up like a friendship there, or like like a yeah. surrogate motherhood kind of a thing there, and that that sort of dropped. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah isolated is a good way to describe for whatever reason, whether it was like shooting schedule and they could only you know have him certain times or whatever but yeah they've definitely he's always isolated like it's always him with the same people for like a while then he's with another person people then so they've done that ever since he's come on the show mm-hmm. um but now like you said he's interacting more with like the ensemble yeah. <laughs> or whatever and mm-hmm. and it's a little more compelling than uh, it was now. Unfortunately, we know <laughs> it's not going to be for that much longer. Yeah. But um, you know, we'll see what they give us for the rest of his uh, his time. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope it's. I hope it's more of this. Yeah, because he deserves and, to go out with a bang. Yeah, I have to say, switching a little bit. I I think I was wrong last week when I was like, oh, I think they're gearing up Nicole to take over Demira, but it looks like we're getting a return of reporter Nicole possibly. <laughs> With that scene with Chad. Whenever, I forgot about that. And I was like, yeah. this character is one of those characters that's like, her resume is like a phone book because <laughs> she's had true. so many different jobs. And I completely forgot about her being a, she was a television reporter. Yeah. With Jack? Yeah, with Jack, I think, yeah. Or wait, like wait. or like something along those lines, or I forget, yeah. I'm trying to yeah. remember when that was. Hey, it may have been girl. during a time I was kind of... Um, yeah out of it but um yeah so yeah maybe she's because nicole needs something else to do yeah other than walk around the house complaining about holly and get her mind off of you know all the bad all the bad stuff she's experienced um and i actually do really like this turn for both Kristen and nicole because we focus so much on their lives as mothers that we forget that for the longest time for like for 20 plus years these women were not mothers they mm-hmm. had thriving careers they had ski they were schemers they had relation like they had full lives mm-hmm. before they were mothers and there's no reason that they can't have both that they can't have full complete lives as women and be mothers yeah. Yeah, I was I, I was hoping that we get a return to like basic black, but now that basic black is under Titan, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, well that makes sense. Why should we wouldn't go back there? Because I was like, wouldn't that be the natural course you just go back to running basic black with Brady? But but there's also the tension with Brady now and mm-hmm. which sort of leads into our what do we think this week of we got some Kate, Holly, and Teresa um <laughs> Brady, little little interaction there with her, um, her writing those notes finally, the, or the letters to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's the right <laughs> thing to do. Not that it will have much of an impact, uh, especially not with Teresa. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Teresa. Teresa's a hard hard nut. She's not going to crack. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, and again, I like seeing I like seeing Teresa in that element. Um, it's kind of the opposite where it's like, I like seeing more of the mother Teresa yeah. than the schemer Teresa, because we so right, we, we haven't gotten to see too much of it up until this past year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Protect yeah, the mama I, bear suits her. I did love it. Like the, the sort of googly eyes that Holly and Tate were giving each other <laughs> across the Brady pub in close up. Like, Oh God, can we be more obvious? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I feel like Brady has the like, the propensity to melt a little bit because he, you know, he's he's mad about the situation, but it's also like I think he I think he also gets these are two kids and it's Holly and this is sort of what I think has been missing with with them. It's like they've 
like I like I understand Tate's been away for years, but Holly's always been there. So Brady should mm -hmm. be more like an uncle to her. There should be more of a relationship there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I I feel like they're they're playing into that a little bit by having him soften. I think a little bit with her. He's not as he's not as sort of nasty. Yeah. Or he doesn't. He's not holding on to things as much as I think Teresa will. Mm -mm. Um, well, yeah, I mean, Nicole is his, his oldest and closest yeah. friend, so it's it'd be kind of tough to keep up that grudge. Yeah. And especially since Tate's not interested at all in being upset. Yeah, and they're still doing, I, 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 they finally addressed the, the school thing, but they didn't really. They were like, oh, just stay away from her at school. I was like, oh, God, you guys are like, come on, like, you're, you, you know, you're, you you've been around the block a few times both of you like can we just sit down and like establish some rules because you know they're gonna see each other you know they're gonna talk mm -hmm. they're both they have told you they're both very interested in being in each other's orbit and like mm -hmm. so come on just like sit down and, and come up with the game plan i for, roll like, my eyes anytime around. a parent says that it doesn't work when it's a crush it doesn't work when it's a bully it's like yeah it doesn't work yeah they're still, yeah, they're still trying to like exercise some control in this situation, and it's like this, this isn't the way to do it. If they, they'll have better luck if they relinquish a little bit of control, yeah. mm -hmm. they'll they'll get more of a positive impact. They'll get more of a positive outcome if they relinquish control and stop just just being so harsh about everything. Yeah, yeah. and they'll set up some rules. <laughs> they'll though, figure like, it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. They're they're, yeah. These two are 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 going to be in. Um, in each other's space for a really long time. Yeah, it's it's not avo it's unavoidable yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. back to Demira's. So, do we think Kristen knows what happened to Leishin? One hundred percent. Because she seemed pretty. I was like, oh, she knows something. One hundred percent, and I'll tell you why. Because during the whole time that that whole that the leash and murder was going on Kristen was nowhere to be found i remember us discussing that because we were we were trying to figure out who who done did it mm -hmm. and or, or who was responsible and i think we were we were talking about you know dr rolf was kind of around at the time yeah. and then Kristen was kind of mia i remember that being a point and then this week where you know, she's like, oh, I want to get, you know, Stefan was talking about getting Gabby out of jail, about to get Gabby out of jail to prove that she didn't kill Lee Shin. You have to figure out who killed Lee Shin. And Kristen was like, you just leave that to me. And I was like, oh, the bitch knows. Oh, so I like got, my first. I got the impression she didn't know because she oh. first asked him, mm -hmm. she said to Stefan, is Gabby really innocent? And I thought that was her way of saying, am I helping you? get an innocent person out or am I helping you get a guilty person out? Like either way, I think she was on board to help Gabby. Mm. If any, no, 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 no. If, that's what she was saying. If anything, that should have been your giant red flag because since when has Kristen cared if anyone's innocent? Well, and it could be, you know, a Kristen, you know, red herring, you know, like. Yeah, could be. One thou I, oh, 100%. I have, I, I, I don't know if I should share my theory yet, but I ha I have a very strong step by step point of I what how how I know Kristen is in, is involved in this mm -hmm. and exactly what what she does and doesn't know what she did and didn't do. But I feel like we're going to get those answers um, in the coming months, and this is just Kristen playing the long game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, I didn't get that. Yeah, I totally was like, okay. Well, write yeah. down your theory, and then when it all comes <laughs> yeah, I know. out, I know. <laughs> write, it, write it down, fold it up, and then when it all comes <laughs> out, we can, you can unfold it, and we can see if uh, you were right. Mm, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. But I just, I, I either, she either knows, or she has a good idea. But I, I kind of, like, just, I just thought, I was like, oh, she knows. <laughs> after that, after that comment, and, you know, I was like, okay, she knows. But you know. I'm gonna, I, I am, I'm gonna take your suggestion, Michael. I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna date it, and then the mm -hmm. when when exactly. we find out, I'm like gonna pull out. See, this is the date. I was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we ha I was trying to, I was trying to on my own remember because it was quite a while ago when it happened, like <laughs> what all was happening at the same time, and I, I did kind of remember. I was like, I don't think Kristen was really 
around so that could be kind of their way to like bring her into it and say mm -hmm. like oh while we weren't seeing her this is what she was doing yeah um yeah it could be interesting if she's mm -hmm. i mean yeah yeah but either way i think it's i i predict going back to their like full circle i predict this will be one of the many ways that it shows that stefan has such short-sightedness mm -hmm. Trusting Kristen has never land, uh, voted <laughs> never well, worked for, out well for people, but <laughs> no one, it doesn't work out for anyone. Well, at least this time it's like in, it's a trade off, you know, it's I'll help you get Gabby out and you help me become C. Like, I feel like at least that's a little, I, and, and again, this is just for my predictions. I, I believe he at the moment thinks it's a fair trade off mm. and that time will show that it was not. See, I was glad that this was their their team up. I thought the team up was going to be like, you, I'll help you get Demira, but we'll be running it together in secret because he can't mm. officially be a part of the company. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought it was going to be, where I was like, okay, this is, I thought in that sense, what you're saying, like, oh, Kristen's going to yeah. double cross. She wouldn't go for that. But now that I know it's, it's a basically, I'll help you become CEO, you help me get Gabby out. And that's, there's no, there's no other lingering ties there i was like oh, okay that that seems like more of a an interesting more trait than mm -hmm. what i was thinking so yeah, yeah. hopefully it pays off yeah. <laughs> it's an intriguing start so hopefully it yeah you know, i mean stay we've gone down this road so many times i mean they have to keep it interesting but also like what is ej what's his motivation here mm -hmm. he's not giving up the da office to go run demira so it, like I'm still confused about that part. I don't get it. His his you know I just I reconcile it as his motivation is power. The more power he has, the more happy EJ is, and mm -hmm. he just has that hubris and that ego about him. That that's what that's what drives him. Mm -hmm. But it's like it seems it seems kind of stupid, but <laughs> yeah, I'm like okay, well, Stefan's completely out of the picture as of right now in terms of like the board and the business side. I'm like mm -hmm. this is the perfect time for you to swoop back in take everything as you wanted it there's no you don't need to compromise with him you don't need to have a partnership but he's not doing that he's saying i'm gonna stay as da but i'm keeping a hand in the business like he's not saying i'm i'm gonna be ceo he's just mm -hmm. saying i don't want you to be i don't want you to be i don't want you to be i don't know it, it yeah i'm waiting for this to like make a little bit more sense from his perspective but i don't know i think we got some Kristen um stefan team up which they haven't they maybe have had like a couple of schemes in the past i'm trying to remember Excuse but me. nothing big they don't they're not two characters that usually come together a lot mm -hmm. yeah so yeah it could be interesting yeah and then we know paulina is not happy with him just <laughs> i mean she was distracted yeah. this week but yeah. she wasn't happy with him that's right before yeah. so We'll see what happens between her because she's kind of she's his boss, yeah. Right, right. she's yep. mayor, yes. he's DA, she's his boss. So yeah, something could happen there. I just yeah. I'm thinking like EJ's building all of this power for himself, mm -hmm. and something's got to get like the bubble yeah. needs to burst yep. sometime. Yep. And I and when it does burst, it may burst very big. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. He has too many people that he's pissing off and antagonizing, mm -hmm. and it's like, like keep like keep these people at bay ej not not do not antagonize everyone yeah at every turn you're you're totally shooting yourself in the foot here but that's what ej gets off on so yeah you know he can't help himself <laughs> true yeah was that it for that storyline i think we exhausted okay. we got chad and xander kind of working together a little bit that was really interesting i like yeah. all of these I actually like the scenes where yeah. people that who don't normally interact or you wouldn't expect to. I mean, tech, I know that they own the paper, but you, I guess I didn't expect them to see that much real like mm -hmm. conversation. And yeah. it was actually really productive. It's yeah. like scenes like that where it makes sense. Please mm -hmm. continue. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad they have Chad doing something else other than like they, they, they don't really have him like focus in a like they kind of have him um popping in various places mm -hmm. yeah but it's a, it's it's more interesting than just having him be about stephanie or about his relationship yeah. yep. or, yes. or whatever so i'm glad they're keeping him in the fold just not in the usual 
relationship drama. That's interesting because, yeah, he usually is the one to mirror to be like, there's drama here. I'm going to go back to the Horton house or the Kyriakis yeah. or I'm going to I'm going to hang out over there and let you guys sort of eat each other alive. But now that with <laughs> it's now his business, literally, to be in their business and to, like, figure all this stuff out. So I think it's an interesting way to get Chad sort of back into the Demira fold in a way, which is, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it'd be fun. And then we have Xander there, who's also starting to put the pieces together about Stefan, but mm -hmm. not he's not there yet, which I'm surprised no. he's not there yet. Yeah, it's, they're taking their time with him figuring yeah. that out because so many people know now. Yeah, It's only a matter of time before, like, the, he figures it out or someone he gets an inkling or something especially and, when there was like oh it's someone who has money because the designer the workout clothes mm -hmm. were expensive and yeah, hello like, Demira. yeah i'm like you mean they got money who just got <laughs> out of jail for <laughs> they're not going to oh, ross to buy yeah. their jogging pants i know right yeah so i don't know they feel like they're like they're slowly taking their time with that but yeah, yeah we'll see well the the chat room's already hot talking about paulina so Oh, wait, no, that's further down. Yeah, yeah. that's not the next storyline. Yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, we'll go on to our next storyline, which is what is she doing? This is the Constantine, Maggie, Alex, Teresa, Chad, um, Thomas, um, and a little bit of Stephanie and Everett thrown in here. <sighs> Maggie, uh, Maggie, Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> she, I, uh, eh, what happened to Maggie? Can we talk about that? <laughs> the last what year we've been saying, oh Maggie, oh Maggie, the year and a half really. The stuff I, with I, Alex I, still comes off bad, even even now that it's like we made up, we're gonna get along, and I'm like Maggie, what are you talking about? <laughs> did you did I miss a scene where you guys are kind of still antagonistic with each other? It's all very clunky. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 I can't say it it her actions make a lot of sense. No. Even, even as a grieving widow, yeah. you know, you were able to give her a pass for a while. Yeah, exactly. But now it's just like, okay, you you're just not thinking right. <laughs> and, and I can't explain it. I can't excuse it. And at some point you're gonna have to be like, all right, she's making she's making her own choices, so she's gonna have no. to deal with consequences. No, no, this is no, no. Look, look, you. There are, there are situations where you know you get someone you care about is marrying the wrong person, and you know that they're just gonna have to learn that lesson the hard way. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, Dylan Matthews gave us three Australian dollars to move on. Well. Thank you for the Australian three dollars. I can't do the conversion right now because I don't know what the rate is. But thank you for the three Australian dollars. We're still going to talk about it a little bit, though. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. just just for a minute, Dylan. Tr trust me, I don't want to. We'll you you know, I don't want to stay on this too long. Yes. But my my point is that there are times when you know that someone just has to learn the lesson the hard way. Those are young people. Those are young people who have the the grace and the uh, time to make those mistakes that are not wealthy widows. Those are times when you call in the cavalry to either do an intervention or stage a kidnapping. <laughs> now they're going with this whole, she feels sorry for him or she's making amends for what Victor's part in like her daughter's death. And I'm like, Oh God, are we like, this is 30 years ago. Like, also, yeah. he was deceitful and not telling you any of this stuff before. Like, all this stuff kind of cancels out, Maggie. You don't need to be making amends for a 30 no. year con. Like, that. someone in the chat room yeah. mentioned that maybe, like, she's not letting on that she knows something or she, like, did a, did a side eye or an eye roll when he was talking and whether that was, like, intentional or part of, like, if Maggie's, this is part of her plan to, like, get rid of him for good. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But it, it definitely doesn't track with <laughs> the Maggie we know. No. <laughs> also, did I thought there was a point where she um, was talking with Constantine and she's like, I need to discuss something with you or tell you something. I thought it was going to be the prenup. I thought she was going to bring that up as like, mm -hmm. oh, my lawyers drew this up. Take a look at it. Just maybe, you know, we, we, we've talked about this in marriage of convenience, but here's, you know, here's this thing I need you to sign or whatever. I... Uh, if she is dumb enough to no, not have I, one drawn up, I need her entire family to rally around her yeah. and demand it. Yeah, for real. 
it it ugh. but judging from her decisions lately i i my confidence is zero that she will i can't i can't with this it, this entire storyline has to go he's yeah. got to go there are some villains that are just icky yeah you know like there's some villains that we like to watch like Kristen and the demaras and things mm -hmm. like that and then there are some people that are like just gross you out that you just want them to go away that's how i feel i have a feeling we'd like constantine a little bit more if they played it um if they upped him actually falling for maggie and there was mm -hmm. like internal conflict there of like I hate Victor, like he killed my daughter. Like the 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 stuff about like Victor being part of like the daughter's death somehow, I feel like is just now coming to light. That's that hasn't been part of his story. It's just been like I've hated Victor, he got all the money I should have had back then, or mm -hmm. he became this powerful businessman and it was supposed to happen to me. And I don't know, I feel like I I like I I still like the character. I think mostly because the actor I think is killing it and he's sort of a, a little bit cartoonish in a so fun soap way, so I like that part of it. But as a character, I think Constantine would be a little bit more sympathetic if he was actually falling for Maggie, or mm. there was some conflict there of like, okay, I really do love this woman, or I'm falling for this woman, but I also freaking hate Victor and want to want to stick it to him, or yeah, mm. yeah. So we then have there's the Teresa part of this, yeah, which. Which they actually clarified some things, which also made me even more mad. They mm -hmm. clarified that he he wants to take half of Ma he wants to take Maggie's half of the fortune, mm -hmm. and he also wants half of Teresa's half. So he wants most of what Victor has, basically saying, "I want like seventy five percent of it, and then you can you can stay with Alex and keep whatever's mm -hmm. you know, left of whatever he has after I take my cut or whatever," which is weird. And then they also clarified that his plan is to take the money and run mm -hmm. that. Because we were confused about that too. We were like, okay, does he want to kill Maggie? Is he that yeah. dangerous? Does he, like, how's he getting his No, he just wants, I think, yeah. yeah, he just wants the money and that's it. So his plan is to that's get all the money he's and leave town. That's his, well, now that the, the John thing complicates things, which. Mm -hmm. But I'm also hopeful that he's just so stupid that he won't real. he won't know how to do that. Yeah. Or I even thought the John thing about him being the pawn and Constantine controlling, I thought it was like gonna get grim where like he was gonna have John like attempt to kill Maggie. Like that's how I my mm. mind was working. Like he's gonna do that so that he inherits all the money or something. That's where my mind went. But he sort of they sort of clarified it this week that his idea is to not harm Maggie in any way, just mm -hmm. take the money and run. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that comes to fruition. And then Thomas got in the mix. With the <laughs> I expected this whole Thomas having that card thing. I know. To, like, I expect a little more from it rather than just like, oh, you have my card, give it back to me. Yeah. And okay. And I was like, oh, they could have, they could have done, a, they could have done a lot with that, and yeah. and instead it's just, oh, he has it back now. Made it Done. interesting for all of two seconds. I know. I know. I was like, oh, they're going to different. I'm like, oh, is Thomas gonna like uncover the plot and like it's gonna be from a kid's point of view. So like people may not believe him or think he's he's you know he doesn't understand life or whatever. I'll be like, is that how they're gonna do this? Or is like Constantine gonna go after the kid and like mm -hmm. that? How, but and then it got kind of wrapped up. I still feel like there's there's a little more to this. I don't know if it's the fact that. Thomas could mention something to someone mm. or he could recognize the card at some point. I don't know. I feel like I feel like they didn't just make him, they didn't bring in Thomas just for nothing. I feel like it's just for the do you think there's gonna be some more like they did it for a reason? We just don't Yeah, know. I think Thomas will come into play at some other point and that he'll recognize because they also made it a point to um that they didn't focus on Chad and Stephanie recognizing the card. So I felt like that's where I thought it was gonna go, where they were gonna see it and that was that would be that would be something. But mm. now it's sort of only Thomas knows about it. So I feel like they're gonna bring him back in this storyline at some point. Did, did Thomas fake they copy the card? Oh <laughs> yeah, Dylan Matthews or 
also said he wanted to see what else Thomas had in his box because it looked juicy. <laughs> and it made me think of like, if you guys are watching Palm Royale, Carol Burnett's character has a bunch of blackmail on everybody. Can you imagine little Thomas oh, yeah. just having a box full of blackmail on everyone in Salem <laughs> and just like carrying the box around and like, come oh, on. God. He's like, the Sierra. remember when Sierra blackmailed Sammy for like yes. diamonds, earrings or something good. like that? Yeah, yeah. her diamond, her yeah, diamond yeah. earring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the, yeah. You're the wrong to marry a child. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I, where's, I don't know. Maggie is a conundrum. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, there's a weird twist in this, but. It just she's just yeah, and then the whole happy. Bella magazine, the whole Bella magazine thing. I'm like, what's this for? What what's the point of this? Like they're going back to this. This was wrapped up a while ago. Like we we it, I don't know. Did we like business Maggie or no? I don't think we did. I or did we just not like the did we not like that she was just such a hard ass with Alex for no reason? Yeah, I didn't yeah. like that part of it. I actually enjoyed remember when um who was it? Stefan and Gabby were trying to get tight in after they were kicked out of Demira. Mm -hmm. And then they had Maggie being like Victor's surrogate where they were meeting with Maggie and she was yeah. like running things. I actually liked that part of it. I liked her being like the advisor over Titan to be like, yes or no, or this is what Victor would have wanted, that kind of a thing. I liked that part of it. But when they actually put her in the company, I just, it didn't fit. It didn't like gel. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like this, the Bella thing, Maybe I'm I may be off here, but I felt like that was a way to get Teresa with Brady because now mm. there's an opening at Basic mm -hmm. Black because Nicole isn't there, and so Teresa now I'm guessing is most likely going to stay with the company. Where do we put Teresa now? It's not Bella mm -hmm. anymore. Do we put her right with Brady running Basic Black? I don't know. I feel like that that was a little. I feel like that would be, I feel like that's exactly what this was intended to do, yeah. to bring Maggie back into the fold business-wise because, oh, Constantine's all intent on Maggie being more involved in the business because then mm -hmm. more money for him. And then uh, Teresa can still stay with the company and this will be her opportunity to um, continue it close to Alex. But then she has a history with Basic Black, so it would make sense mm -hmm. to put her back there. Yeah. And I feel like she's, both her and Brady are, these feelings are lingering. They're not mm -hmm. like at the surface yet, but they've been, they've been accumulating over ever since, ever since she got back or ever since they sort of got on one accord with Tate, with the Tate situation. Yeah. I feel like they're getting closer and closer. Everyone in the chat room keeps mentioning either Constant, Constantine's daughter or wife need to show up. Like they're mentioning them a lot. And like, we're assuming like, well, wait, the wife is still alive. The daughter's allegedly dead, yeah. but the wife is still alive. They just parted ways. I'm I'm wondering something, but again, I, I need to I need to write it down. And mm -hmm. I was gonna say, I, I think it might be what you're thinking, Michael. But I don't know if I want to say it. I don't want to ruin what you're thinking. There have been some yeah. theories about. I have a theory about the the Constantine's wife. And who she yes. might be to some other people. Yes. There's a theory out there that has sort of got debunked, actually, but it depends if they retcon that. Yeah. If, yeah. Hmm. There's a theory that this person is related to someone, but they they sort of address that early on, actually, in the storyline that, okay. that this person wouldn't be related, but they could always oh, retcon oh. that. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. I think the wife is gonna come into play. Maybe she becomes a little bit of a wedding crasher when mm -hmm. this like fake wedding is about to happen or something. Yeah. I just can't with this. Just please. <laughs> whatever, whatever this ridiculous wedding oh, is supposed no. to be, let it happen sooner rather than later. I can't. Yeah. I can't with this. Yeah. It's icky. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. I, it's, yeah. I think they've exhausted the storyline one way. We need like some movement here. Please, yeah. Please. please. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it for that. And on to our final major storyline. This one is <laughs> question. Did she drive the snowplow? This is a Paulina, Chanel, Johnny, Julie, Marlena, John, and a little bit of Sarah. Okay, for those people <laughs> who live in very snowy areas, you need to tell us because those of us who live in desert climates don't know. 
is it possible for just anyone to be able to drive a snowplow? Hell no. Just sit down in the chair and drive a snowplow. No. No, but Not it's also really I I wouldn't think so. Like you probably have to have some sort of special license. You probably need to have some special training. I don't think it's like a car. I also think right. Who knows if Paulina was operating it the most efficiently? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, it just it made it sound. And I was like, okay, well, did she did she like hop on a snowplow with a driver? But they didn't make it sound like it. They made it sound like she commandeered a snowplow yeah. and plowed her way to the Horton cabin. It sounds to me like she went to City Works and said, "I'm the mayor. Give me a snowplow or a fire." Give me and City Works yeah. on the phone now. <laughs> That's my Paulina impression. That was a good one. Get me city works. I mean, okay, I know that this is the soap, but this storyline felt like it belonged in um, a soap within a soap. That's this was a how, body and soul storyline. This was a body and soul storyline. Yeah. This was not a Days of Our Lives storyline. This it was just in it, in in the fact that again, it like. It wrapped up so quickly. And the way it wrapped up was a conversation with John and Marlena babysitting little Jude, uh, Jude yeah. babysitting and being like, oh, yeah, well, luckily they were rescued and are on their way to the hospital. I was like, well, that was OK. Good for them. Bless their <laughs> and, hearts. And, and, and that was it. This whole and this whole thing, I couldn't even believe it. It, it was like. I, I was really trying to understand what the person who wrote this was trying to go for because if you're trying to make this a great storyline, A, it's not. B, you're trying too hard. And C, you deep you undercut your whole um, process by then having Marlena come into the situation and say this is like the story of a bad B movie except it's not funny. Most <laughs> spot on sentence I have ever heard come out of that woman's uh -oh. mouth. I have to say I actually like the storyline and I, I think this storyline is a setup actually and here's, here's where I'm going. It needs to be like, it need, like they can't have just done this like for filler like it, it well, here's my here's my thing. I the past couple of weeks I've been like, why are why are we doing this whole like Paulina radioactive iodine treatment thing? Like, what's the point? We already got the miracle heavenly cure from Lexi. Like, why are they sticking with this? And I'm like, okay, why are they doing it? And then we thought it was just informational. And then they're showing her in the hospital room and that Sarah with the hazmat suit. And I'm like, okay, why are we getting this? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this is a jumping off point for something else i think that the radioactive is going to be a plot point coming up mm -hmm. i think it's going to be uh this is going to be a chanel paulina storyline i think i think we're going to get fertility <laughs> issues from chanel because because oh. they kept saying what if she's radioactive she was too close to chanel chanel's uh -huh. sort of the most vulnerable and i'm thinking okay then they did those flashbacks of them as the mother daughter, where it's like, I love you. I'm going to protect you. Then Pauline is mm -hmm. getting out of bed to protect Chanel. And I'm like, okay, I think we're leading into Paulina is going to, Paulina has infected Chanel. And there's mm -hmm. going to be some consequences to that radioactive infection. And I'm thinking maybe okay. like fertility issues or Chanel's going to have her own sickness or illness. I'm thinking. You better yeah, get something out could of it. This. Because be. this was I'm like, what what was all this for? And then again, was Chanel, all this was, Chanel was missing for what all of an hour. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, what was all this for then? It has to it has to be leading up to something because there's a lot of questions about this whole scenario. Like, why did Marlena go into her room without a hazmat suit? Hmm. Why was it safe? Why was it considered safe for Paulina to be like so like like six feet away, probably not even yeah. from everybody when Sarah had to have a hazmat suit. Yeah. It was just a lot of questions, but yeah. hopefully to your point, it does go somewhere and there are more ramifications or whatever from this scenario yeah. that make it make sense. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Cause I'm like, why do we go through the iodine treatment? Then she's rescuing Chanel who was missing for an hour. 
And they made it a point to say that um, uh, Johnny was coming upon the same area that Chanel was. So he eventually would have found her. So it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't even like, you know, he didn't know where to look or he wasn't going to find her. So I'm like, okay, there has to be. Ba basically, Paulina did not need to leave. It was not that dire her. of a situation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. For her to for her to leave her isolation, yeah. Commandeer a snowplow, get the city works on the phone, yeah. and do what she did. Yeah, I think she's infected Chanel, and there are going to be consequences for that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm thinking like I'm thinking fertility issues, just because her and Johnny are newly married. Mm -hmm. Kids might be an issue coming up. I, yeah. Well, I yeah, and that would be a next because you know I do think sometimes when we see Johnny and Chanel, I'm like, okay, where where are they going to take yeah. them now that they're they're married? We please don't do another like third wheel yeah. scenario with them yet. Yeah. Like let yeah. them let them live a little bit of married bliss and then the mm -hmm. drama can come in in a little bit, but what will the drama be? And that would be a unique scenario for them. It's not the typical yeah. like some some chick's gonna come in and blow everything up, either take Johnny away from Chanel or Chanel away from Johnny. And you know, enough of that for now. And also create some drama with Chanel and Paulina too. I mean, if you're mm. If she's the cause, she, yeah. Yeah, she also made that remark when um, Paulina was helping her in and she was sort of leaning on her. She put her down and she was like, oh, I made, you know, I got too close to you. And Chanel was like, she said something like, or it's already done now. It's And I was like, when she mm -hmm. said that, like my eyes perked them like, oh, it's already done now. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. she may have infected you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm we'll not see, sure yeah. if it would have made the storyline better or worse to actually see Paulina in full fur coat get up on the snow plow <laughs> right. so who wants to any volunteers want to photoshop that for us because uh -huh. i don't know i just want to test out the theory. yeah yeah i gotta say though i i have been loving julie the last few weeks <laughs> i think this is like the part this is <laughs> when i love when they use her like when when they make up the two like when she goes in too deep about being the busybody, it's like, okay, whatever, Julie. But this, to me, the past few weeks or months, this is when I think they use Julie really perfectly. Mm -hmm. And again, Susan Seabrook is <laughs> just, like, on it. Like, she's mm -hmm. still with it. Like, nothing's slowing her down. I like the fact that they're putting her with different people, and they're mm -hmm. using her, like, she's a vet on the show. This is how you're supposed to use her. Get her interacting with the kids and Chad. Get her with Johnny and Chanel, which is like an unlikely pairing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I don't know. I've been loving her. My <laughs> my thing that I think when, not if anything positive, but if hopefully she leans on the show through her grief and getting over you know mm -hmm. Bill's passing and and moving on with her life. I hope that they continue to lose to use Julie um, mm -hmm. even a lot more than they have been. I just I just think she's been kicking ass lately and. Yeah, she's just I such mean, a fun character. I also, I, and I remember, I remember liking because they still have, you know, Julie's place, right? Like that's still, yeah, theoretically. Like yeah. when, when yeah. that would be like the hangout, and she would be there, and she mm -hmm. would be like, if, if you guys yeah. know, they, they made um on Young and the Restless. Who was that? Um, Neil, the Romalotti. Gina. Yeah, Gina, like she's like oh, the yeah, Gina. Gina. She's like the Gina. Yeah. She like owns the restaurant or she owns the the place where everybody hangs out, and that's kind of her her thing. But mm -hmm. I also like that they're kind of you said kind of incorporating her in with a lot of different people yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't stop giggling when she <laughs> these two these two these two people on their honeymoon supposed to be having a romantic time, and she's got like I've got winter coats for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've made cocoa. Yeah, <laughs> and then the thing with the phone that was cute. Actually, I was like, oh, I Julie, I would have totally done that. I would. Yeah, yeah. And the point she even said she even said mute. Yeah, <laughs> and the point, when she did that and it was revealed, Pauline getting her, I was like, oh man, I wouldn't even even thought to mute it. I would have just like. Put it you down. Kept walking, yeah. kept talking, yeah. I was like, Julie's on it. I, I wouldn't have even thought to do that. So yeah. I, I just thought her scenes were just so great this week. Yeah. Tried her best. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is that it for all of our major storylines this yep. week? Um yeah, yeah. before we go into our tidbits, just a little reminder to follow us on social media. I'm Dish and Day Show on Facebook at Dish and Days on Instagram. 
um, and Dishy Days on X in um, Twitter. Oh no, X and Threads. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are watching us right now, do us a favor. Please take two seconds to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you are um, notified when we put up new content. And you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio if you are not watching us live or on YouTube. And last but not least, uh, go check out our former host, James Lott Jr. at JLJ Media, where he's covering the rest of the soap block in addition to original audio dramas. Yeah. So moving on to our tidbits, we have the first one up is just get the damn book already. This is the Ava Harris. Uh, we have a little EJ trip and Wendy in this I'm one. like, why are you just sitting at the pub with you. talking about it? Just Aww. you have the keys, go get it. <laughs> Just go get this, it. You you and, you've you're already you've already established that you're going to do it. This was so driving me it. crazy, Michael. I was like, wait, didn't Clyde call her like three days ago? And it's still no, they're like they've been it's talking Salem about time. it. For days, three days ago at Salem time. Yeah. That was like two weeks ago. I, know. Uh, I and then did he, not understand this. I was like, and then they kind of had to make up something about like oh, it's hidden, so they have to, like, find it now. And I'm like, okay, well, couldn't you have been looking for it for two days? Like, I, I was so confused about this. And then you know, EJ comes in and is like, oh, well, give me the keys to the bistro, and I'll give it to Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Get out of here. Anything. Why are you involved? Yeah, get out of here. Again, he has to piss on everything, yeah. EJ. He just has to... Just to yep. <laughs> Yeah, yep. the only semi interesting part of this storyline was for the first time Trip and Wendy. And for those of you who ex who think that they will always be boring, let me explain why. First of all, we didn't talk about the proposal, which <laughs> anytime we're not talking about it, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> and people have wanted to us to veer more into the wendy ptsd of it all and it does seem mm -hmm. like we're getting that mm -hmm. with kind of saying without saying that this is this is one of the conversations that they needed to have and why they're not officially engaged um because you sort of take a step back and say okay what are the things that we need to work on as in a real as as a couple that mm -hmm. are going to come up if we get married and then by then it'll be too late and a big thing is family specifically his family yeah. specifically his mother and she makes valid points of like i love you i want to be in a relationship with you but i can't go through this again mm -hmm. so i'm not telling you what we have to do oh uh i'm not telling you what to do i'm not saying that i'm gonna make any decisions right now but i'm telling you i can't go through this again so for the sake of our relationship she, like w you know this is basically saying this is why we're not getting married yet without saying this is why we're not getting married mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. yeah yeah i like that part of it um i just feel like with them they're i feel like they're having the same scene over and over and even if they're not exactly talking about the exact same thing it's the same scene mm -hmm. when i'm like i need them to like incorporate other people in it like i said i actually like tripping one day as a couple i don't think that every couple needs to like be amazing i, I like the fact that they're a stable couple um and i like that they can be put into interesting situations or interact with um more of the other sort of gray characters i like that but just putting them to in a scene and having them again have the same sort of conversation over and over i'm like okay we we can move on from this we can the PTSD thing, it's kind of interesting, but I'm still waiting for something to happen. Like, mm -hmm. I need her to either talk to someone, like, separate them. Let her go talk to someone. Let him go talk to someone about it. And, it, yeah, we need to move the storyline forward. I'm not, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just uh, it's just stalled for me with those two. Yep, same. Yeah. <laughs> I like them when they were, like, part of with Ava and Harris. I like that part of it when they were helping. I, like I like them when they're with more dynamic other characters, but yeah. Mm -hmm. The one the just the one-on-one -on -one conversations yeah. with them it, it's week after week. It's just like okay, this again, this again, this again. Just enough. The, yeah. Have them talk to someone else. Or one of them talk to someone else. And Something. They, they have like I think was it either this week or last week we had trip with um was it Paulina? 
last week? Maybe I don't think it was this past week. Maybe it was the week before. It was the, it was last week when he, they were showing him as the when doctor, he jumped from the apartment to the yeah. hospital. Yeah, like, that's right. That, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, where's like, can Wendy like converse with Jada again? I like that original <laughs> conversation they had. Like, can she be doing her work at the police station? Like, I need yeah. That them just sitting down having a one on one conversation is is a little much. Yep. Yeah. Is that it for yeah? And we you have, mm-hmm. we 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 still do not have this book yet. They are now going. To... We don't have the book, and it was established that uh, the police still don't haven't found Clyde or mm-hmm. Goldman, and that they thought they did, but it turned out to be a bad a bad lead. Yeah, womp, womp. We were, and we're getting Ava's officially moved in now, which still doesn't make any sense to me. But whatever, like there's no no commentary about like mm-hmm. we needed to clear this with Roman. There's no no like weirdness of Roman having her live under his roof. I don't know. It's a little strange, but um, they're going with this. They're getting closer, but he also doesn't know that she helped break in, break Clyde out. So that's the lingering mm-hmm. secret between those two. So <sighs> yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, yeah, not as nice. I don't know. I think we we all needed a break from this Clyde storyline, and we thought like it was wrapping up when he escaped, and it was like we'll revisit this at a later date. But yeah, it's still lingering, unfortunately. He's still there. Yeah, but yeah, moving on to our next tidbit. This one is called uh, "Living in Sin." This is the Rafe Jada with Everett and Stephanie. What do you guys think is going on here? I feel like there. This is also another setup for something that I don't know if I want, but I'm glad he signed the divorce papers because, yes. to everybody's point, why you still want to stay married to this person that you allegedly don't remember? If there was no, if your, if your stance is there was, I don't remember the relationship. I have no feelings for you. So, and the whole thing about, well, it would be forgery. It would be forgery. And then Everett goes in, and I just want him, like, anytime he gets all self-righteous, like, are you keeping the press from blah, blah, blah? I was like, get the fuck <laughs> out of there, dude. Like, I'm on Rafe's side of this. Like, I like he was like, have someone been, else. I've never been more on Team Rafe than I was really? this same. Oh, I was on Everett's side on that part. Oh, heck no. I was totally on Rafe's side because it wasn't It's like he's like he was trying to come in like, oh, this is abuse of power. I was like, I'm not saying that I'm not barring the press from coming in here and being able to ask questions. That exa- that's a, the press is right. I'm saying you can't come in here and you can't come talk to me until you sign those divorce papers. Well, that's also a personal issue. That's nothing to do. With I mean, it is, you know, know what? You, yeah, Justin's absolutely right. Like it was a personal issue and Rafe should be more of a professional about it but knowing what we know about yeah. her, we're, we're you know i'm like get the fuck out of there like, yeah no yeah, shut up i was totally <laughs> on rafe's side and it was just like it, w- it was like oh this this is the relationship i've always wanted for rafe where it's like he's this i really feel like he he's found his partner you know mm-hmm. and, and you know and and to to bring even full more full circle it's been a long time since we've had a really good partnership romantic and actual partners in the police department that used to be uh yeah. hope and Bo back mm-hmm. in the day mm-hmm. not comparing yeah. them to not yeah. comparing them to the brady's <laughs> that i'm not doing that don't jump on me people i'm not saying that one super couple is even comparison our, our rsl is saying that jada and ray for the new bow and hope yeah i am not i am <laughs> tweet not. her at tia rsl three two three i am Wait, not and that's just not kidding. my handle i know but it's not tia three, i'm two, just three, saying <laughs> that i'm just saying that it is it is nice to see and it is it is very positive to see Rafe have a healthy relationship and also has expressed his love for Jada in a way that's not overbearing. Like, I don't think he overstepped at all in that scenario. He mm-hmm. was just, he, he was just, he was not speaking for Jada. He was not speaking above her. He mm-hmm. was not being all like macho about it. He was just, speaking he was speaking up for her right to have her own life yeah um I, yeah i like rafe and jada taylor i think they're mm-hmm. a solid couple um another they're another one for me where they're a good couple and it's like give them other things to do like you can mm-hmm. you know what makes them interesting to me is that they work together they're on the police force 
they can't, you know, they have this other drama from outside events. Um, mm -hmm. There's also a part of me that's also like, okay, like, Barbarette, like, he also didn't, like, murder a bunch of people. Like, ease up a little bit. Like, I think we're getting a little bit of that, that we know of this week. Yeah, that we know of. <laughs> it's sort of like the, the, what they know of is that he, he cheated on Jada. And I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm like thinking, I'm like, he's a okay. dog. I was like, Ray, that, how many times have you cheated? I, I no, know, I was like, no. I waited. He never, I, as far as I remember, he never cheated on a wife. He cheated on, he's cheated on girlfriends before. Mm -hmm. But I was like, okay, Rafe, maybe like, like back up. He, he's not squeaky clean, but it, yeah. no, but it's been established that it was, that it wasn't just the cheating on Jada that pissed her off. It was the gaslighting and the lying. And she's mentioned a couple of times about how when she found out that he was cheating on her, he straight up lied to her face. And he was trying to make her think that she was crazy. He would pick fights with her. He would make her think that it was all in her head. He was he was he was gaslighting her. Yeah. At the same I mean, time. And so that's that's sure. different. It would have been totally different if he had said, Yeah, I want I'm 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 done. I want to merge to be out. I want to yeah, get. Out. I mean, yeah, it's different. So that's why that's why Rafe is kind of like, uh, uh, this this guy gets no passes from me. Well, I'm in addition to Rafe, I just mean also everyone. How everyone regards him sometimes it's like, okay, like chill out. Like, yes, he's Jada's ex husband, and you don't know the whole story. And like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of vitriol that comes out of for, for, for for me. It's just the self righteous attitude he has yeah. about mm -hmm. everything. It's like, yeah. He's just, it's just him, you know, and yeah. it's like, you know, he's right. You know, he's making a good point, but it's the fact that he is making it and you just want to shut up. Yeah. yeah. Like Are lying to Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like lying to Stephanie right in front of Marlena and she totally clocked it. Mm, yeah. Marlena did. Yeah. Oh yeah. Marlena totally was. Yeah. She totally clocked it. Like, oh, okay. That's what you're going with. Okay. But I also, I don't know. I also like. I also don't care about people lying about personal information that other people shouldn't know. Like that always, like if he's going to lie about something, lie about your own therapy session. That is really your own business. Mm. But what I find more interesting is the fact that he signed the divorce papers more for Stephanie than I felt he did for himself. And that's, what's making me think like, okay, where are we going here? Is, does he, is he, does is he having actual feelings? Is this maybe other alter personality coming through? And mm -hmm. I don't know. There's something weird that I'm like. He sort of he sort of showed it as I'm gonna do this to show you that I'm moving on and I'm doing this kind of for you, basically, so that we can mm -hmm. have have a possible future. And then simultaneously, we have Jada who's saying, you know what? I'm gonna back off a little bit. Maybe I'm coming on too strong. Let's, you know, let's see if this works itself out, which again, according like her, her perspective, like do that girl. Cause you are walking around just steaming mad and angry mm -hmm. and it doesn't help you regardless of what he's done. It's, it has also been, I don't know, X amount of years. So it's like, yeah. Understand the anger is understandable, yeah. but it ain't, it isn't helping. And but yeah. she's realizing that now. So. Yeah. So I like that part of it, but I don't know. There's something with him where I'm like, okay, what's going on here? You're just mm -hmm. doing this for Stephanie. Either do you have feelings for Jada or is this, you know, if it's DID, is this, is your other alter sort of peeking through here or coming through? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> Stephanie's sort of war not warming to him, but she's, I think she's, she's getting back to being more sympathetic to him, I mm -hmm. think, than she for was sure. a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, and last but not least, our last little tidbit here. This one is pro broke. This one is Eric Sloan, Leo, and a little bit of John and Marlena thrown in here. Hmm. So things, well, are, things are happening here a little. I, don't I like know. that Eric I is. About this. I mean, Eric. It, it seems to be slowly, <laughs> very slowly, slowly, yes, very slowly, <laughs> inching towards. Um, at least one of Sloan's secrets. Yeah. It's not a once he it basically is like he needs to get to one of them because once he gets to yeah. one, it'll be yeah. it won't be a big leap to the other. Yeah. But he yeah. needs to get there first. 
Mm -hmm. I, yeah, this is one too, because I, I kind of have a feeling that it's playing like he's getting there, but I also think maybe Sloan and Leo can, can, um, like toward him and and like pacify him with with a simple lie or scheme. I don't know. I don't know what that is yet, but I don't know. I don't know how successful he's gonna be um, against those two if they really teamed up and wanted to keep him in the dark. I think they could. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know. I don't have much to say about this one. <laughs> I'm just like I'm like it. Yeah, not. Yeah, I, I, who, I don't know like, who knew, who knew who knew that uh, that uh, Leo could quote Aristotle. Yeah, who knew a lot of things about Leo lately? <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I do like Leo and Eric scenes though. Whenever yeah. they, I don't know. I think I think they they have some chemistry there, just as <laughs> partners. But if <laughs> if Leo wasn't such a such a crazy like schemer person he could make a really good friend to a lot of characters yeah. on the canvas totally. because he's yeah. just so kind of you know you need that you know you need that one friend that's just kind of off the wall that's yeah. always there to kind of like yeah. bring you down to earth and to just say the most random shit to bring you to just kind of get you out of your head yeah yeah and at this point all he heard was that he knows that Leo was talking to Sloan and that Sloan was trying to get Leo to get Eric a job mm -hmm. which I mean isn't that isn't that crazy I feel like I, don't, no. I feel like they can kind of wiggle their way out of that one I feel Yeah but, that's that that's we'll not see. yeah though though yeah. especially with Eric and the way he's acting right yeah. now you know not, not Yeah um they can make something up about it Yeah mm -hmm. like yeah. she could just she can literally just be like oh I'm just trying to help I'm just exactly. trying, you know I, I know you're struggling you. when yeah. You know, so I was, you know, just appealing to him as a friend and maybe blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they can totally talk their way out of that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see how this progresses since Eric, mm -hmm. Eric is slowly catching on. We'll see. We'll see if he gets, I don't know. We'll see how long it takes for him to actually say something or, <laughs> or, or make some movement here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, that wraps up our show. Um, yeah, before we get into our segments here and Tony is out. So we do not have a three snaps, but we are going to start with. Caption that. All right. This week's caption that photo comes courtesy of husband and wife, Nicole and EJ. And this year, uh, this year's, this week's caption goes to Christina Sullivan, Miss Christina 617 on Instagram with her caption, whoever's idea it was not to include us <laughs> will not be invited to cocktail hour. At the oh. <laughs> oh. And on the one day that Tony's not here. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a very good one. I thought it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, before we move on, uh, hi, Mark J. Freeman. Oh, hey, Mark. Oh, is she in the chat? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Miss, oh, she's in. he's rarely off. Mark J. Freeman, you're <laughs> off on the daily. Shady Sunday. Just kidding. Oh, Mark, we love to hear your thoughts on how. Da <laughs> what you oh, think yeah. You'll just be going about your day. <laughs> Just going about your day, having some lunch, doing a little work, and all of a sudden, vroom, vroom, you look at your phone. No, and this it's... week it's okay because I think that Mark J. Freeman will agree with me that Maggie needs uh, to be kidnapped. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sure he does. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yes. Or, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure he'll, yeah. I'm sure he's loved. I, listen, Constantine's his favorite character, I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Mark. I think Mark's caught up, right? He was like weeks behind, but now I think he's he's caught up. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that was. Oh, my bad. <laughs> See, Mark J. Freeman just distracts. Caption so day. distracting. <laughs> distracting. And next up, we have. Those were the days. All right, everyone, I'm taking you back to April 15, 2019, where we had two weddings, not double wedding, but two weddings on mm. this on this day. Um, this <laughs> is the Trip and Haley one in the Jack and Eve one, both sort of connected in a weird way. This is the period of time where 
Jack was a sort of mini lighthearted Trump-esque um, politician scorned on by amnesia and being manipulated by Eve at the same time. And his big stance was immigration, which directly affected Haley, who I really miss. I really wish they didn't kill off her character, especially since we have Melinda. And I don't know, I just think it, it I don't know, I, I would love to see an iteration of them as mother and daughter. I feel like mm-hmm. it was getting started, they sort of squashed that. But this was when Haley was marrying um, Trip to stay in the country and in Salem. And yeah, we had this this juxtaposition of these two couples on, on either end of this issue. But yeah, that was April 15, 2018, where we had these two weddings. Those were the days that I wish I could forget. Of the of the storylines they had um Cassie do as Eve, that was like the worst. Yeah, that like was we know that that Eve is sometimes unlikable, but to put her in that light, I was just yeah. the entire time it was just icky with with you know, and I know it was what it was uh, relevant uh, to what was yes. going on in the world and everything, but we don't need to, it was enough to have it happening in the real world. We didn't want to watch it, but anyway, you know, yes. say lovey. Yeah, and next up we have it's a gift. Uh, and this week's it's a gift, and, and I'll I'll be honest, folks. This was slow picking. It was a uh, very slim pickings this week. Uh, but I do like when EJ is very very much EJ and uh, does his version of the kiss off. <laughs> kind of a little long, but yeah, yeah. that was kind of cute. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I did laugh. Sorry. The kiss is part. I thought your it's a gift was going to be Nicole's reaction to um, was it Teresa that kind of was giving oh, her lip yeah. and Nicole's yeah. face was just like, oh, yeah, it. She like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that big. It was, yeah, it was not, sorry. It was, there was slim pickings as folks. This yeah. I wonder with, and I wondered with this scene in particular, like how much of this was scripted and how much was I, yeah. Dan being Dan. I thought that too. Basically. I do yeah. think that there was a lot of little things like that that I I do think is Dan putting those kisses in were that. very Dan. That was very yeah. Dan. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's it's also EJ too. EJ, yeah. So yeah. it's it's not like it it doesn't fit. Yeah. But, but yeah. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> it's a gift. And next up, we have. News and gossip. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. No, not hearing it. <laughs> Technical issues. What happened? It's not play. Oh, there it is. News and gossip. All right. Did it come out squeaky before, or was that my hearing? It's always been a little squeaky. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we have some big, big congratulations in order. Days of Our, we got the news this week that Days of Our Lives has been nominated for 11, yes, 11 daytime Emmys. Um, I'm gonna sort of jot down the list here. We have Eric Martzoff, an outstanding lead actor. We have Tamara Braun, an outstanding lead actress. We have both Lindsay Godfrey and Emily O'Brien in supporting actress. We have Wally Kurth in supporting actor. We have Mr. Dick Van Dyke in guest performer. Um, we also want to give um, a shout out, sorry, in addition to Days, let's take with Days for a minute, we also had nominations for writing, directing, technical camera work, casting, and Days also got um, a nod for daytime drama, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, friend of the show, um, not on Days right now, Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike Manning um, <laughs> also got nominated in the Outstanding Supporting Actor for his role in The Bay, so big congratulations to Mike. Yay! And it was an award-winning week. Actually, when we were on air, the Writers Guild um, was doing their their awards, so we didn't cover that in last week's. But as um, soon as we got off air, we noticed that Days did win um, <clears throat> for um, Best Drama. So just they've been having an amazing week. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about a little bit about these nominations. So, sorry, big congratulations to Ron Calabarty and um, the rest of the writing crew, including mm-hmm. our friend Ryan Kwan. Ryan Kwan. Um, yeah, this consultant. So, 
Yeah, talking about these Emmy nominations, we did a little bit of it in our, our own personal chat, but mm -hmm. what do you guys think? Thoughts, opinions? I agree with the nomin with the nominations that they got. You know, we always hope this seems to be a, a an ongoing theme where we just, you know, there are people that from days specifically that weren't, you know, acknowledged. And then it seems like there's two shows in particular that just seem to be whoever the voters favorites and yeah. they kind of have a monopoly on the um on the nominations which is always a little disappointing because there's some people where it's like okay this person's been nominated and won several times and then they're nominated again but that's just the nature of of how it goes that if yeah. the votes are there then you know they get nominated so it's always you know you always you know like stacy's always done a good job dan's done a good job yeah. i mean we could go <laughs> there's so many yeah. you know people from days that weren't acknowledged that we think deserve but i definitely feel like these six actors definitely deserve their their um, nominations mm -hmm. and these aren't necessarily actors that get nominated every year yeah mm -hmm. which is nice yeah, yeah as you for said. sure so this and was... emma and you know emily was emily and emily was nominated for gwen, for gwen not yes. For yes and she really you know we had mixed feelings about that character you know we were rooting for her but then you know she would pull some shit and we'd just be like ah but i think she really deserved the nomination for that for that role she really um what's the word made um like elevated made, or... made yeah, something out of material. shit yeah mm -hmm. made gold yeah. out of totally whatever yeah <laughs> i'm laughing at mark because he's keeping his lips zipped yeah, mark is... <laughs> mark he has told me what he he told me what he thought in an instagram dm i'm sure and i was like <laughs> okay yeah i was really happy that um we got representation in like the major sort of four now five with guest performers sort of five um, yeah. um groups which was really great i was glad to see that I was last glad year to was see depressing wally. huh last year was depressing yeah i was glad to see wally get in i was glad to see eric recognized um and we are and as as the days have gone by um people have been forthright with what they submitted and what sort of got them and we know that eric submitted a lot of the the stuff with um both stacy and finley as um as Kristen and Rachel yeah. will see yeah, that he, that he just, broke that on our show. Yeah. 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 So I'm happy for Tamara, but I feel like Tamara mm -hmm. is, is always great and glad she's being recognized. And I think she submitted the, either the Bayview scenes, I believe. So a lot of that stuff was, I mm -hmm. think great. Yeah. Tamara, <laughs> shit in the sugar. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really interesting because um, Emily had the chance to submit scenes for either Gwen or Teresa. I feel mm -hmm. like she probably made the decision to submit for Gwen because she was still finding her footing in the latter, the back half of last year as Teresa. Um, maybe she wasn't feeling as confident as her work. I mean, I feel like we as an audience, once the scene aired, we're like, holy moly, uh, this is like, doing this fantastic work. But I understand she felt like she needed some time to find her footing with that. And Wally was interesting because he he actually just was talking to me. He had a major story on General Hospital last year as well uh, that he could have submitted for as well. So he actually could have not uh, submitted for either one, and it would have worked out. Um, yeah, when I when I heard Wally, I thought it was a General Hospital one, and it was like, oh, you know, congratulations, even still the same. But and then I saw it was like, oh no, it's for days. And then mm -hmm. and then the wheels got turned, and I'm like, I'm I'm pretty sure it was probably for those that sort of Alex paternity reveal mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is not a reveal, but yeah, I think Wally yeah. just did amazing work back then. If I had for to sure. do a prediction right now of who I think among these would be maybe like the strongest contender, and this is just me speaking objectively because I've seen all of the soaps and I've or uh, almost all the soaps and I've seen most of the material, and I, I kind of have an, I have an idea of what everybody has submitted. I, I would, I actually think, um, unless people pick their favorite Eric Braden because Eric Braden just has been, uh, um, on, on, I mean, he's like the king over at Young and the Restless. I really do think that this is Eric Martsoff's year. Hmm. This is not me playing favorites. I, I, he submitted such strong material mm -hmm. this year, and I really think that he could take it. And I dare anybody to <laughs> deny Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, I dare you. He, it, it his like 
Yeah, to shut out someone of his age. Yeah. I dare look. you. I think that's a strong one. I still think Emily might be a strong one. I think she's she's very well respected in this industry and she's been on a few soaps over the years. Mm -hmm. So I think she might have some really good support behind her. So I think I think we've we've got some good chances here for for days to um take home take home some awards. Um but in addition to that, if your favorites or if you thought more days actors should have been nominated, um there are other award shows speaking of we are continuing our the highly sought out yes yes we are still <laughs> we do have our version 2024 edition days awards coming up where we will actually announce the nominees next week i believe is mm -hmm. on our schedule so look out for that um it's another opportunity for some of your faves to um to get nominated and be recognized for their work and we have we have some um a few surprises here that you'll see not only with nominations but um a couple of interesting new categories that I think I think mm -hmm. that everyone will like. So we have been busy, folks. Yes, we have. Yes. So just <laughs> yeah. to so just so that everybody has it clear in their minds. So the nominations for the daytime Emmys were announced this past Thursday, I believe. Yeah, they Friday. the the broadcast will be June seventh. Yes. Uh, Friday, June seventh. CBS on CBS. Um, our awards show nominations, the 2024 edition days awards, we will be announcing the nominees next week. Mark your calendars. Okay. Next week is the day for our nominations to go live. And we will tell you at that time when and where to submit your votes and how long the voting period lasts. Um, and if you've been a part of our show before and you know how the and you've uh, seen us do the awards show, you know that we try to kind of tailor the, our awards show in and around the daytime Emmys. So look for that that week, that two week period to be very busy for us. Okay. So have some, uh, have some patience. <laughs> We're going to be, it's going to be a very, very busy uh, few weeks in June. So yeah, stay tuned. And big congratulations to all of um, the nominees a lot yeah. of them are are we are friendly with and we've been we've had some really nice conversa conversations back and forth about mm -hmm. about their nomination so it's a and i and i i make no apologies i do play favorites i hope all i think all of the, <laughs> all of the days uh emmy nomination should win yep absolutely of course because <laughs> yeah. they're my favorites and i don't want they're to all the religiously, absolutely. So, you know what yeah. they're all deserving and you know it's, it you know last year we were hoping we were there like ah, uh, ah. It's just yeah. it would be nice to see our favorite people get some some recognition. Yeah, yes. I think. We're I mean, the nominations, the recogn is recognition, but you know, take yes. home the gold. But yep. if yes, but if God forbid they don't, we make sure to never leave anyone out. Yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, uh, we have there is a big, big, big fan event coming up, and why is it big? Because it has freaking everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is coming up in a couple of weeks. This is called the Daytime Unites to Help ALS. It is being uh, uh, coordinated by General Hospital's uh, Nancy Lee Gron. And so this fan event will take place Saturday, May 4th in Glendale, California. This is a huge meet and greet uh, and Q&A area. I mean, this is going to be a big fan. I mean, look at the – you have – yeah. Soap stars from every single main prime time soap from days of our lives. Uh, let's see. We've got Patrika and, and Nichols. Yeah, and we've, got Patrika, Nichols. we've got Patrika. We've got Stephen Nichols. We have so Eileen fun. Davidson. Yeah. Uh, we have, um, I'm trying to think. I think that's it so far, but maybe. That's it from days. Yeah. yeah everyone so. else is from mostly, it's mostly General Hospital and we've got Christian LeBlanc from YNR. Uh, bu, 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 bu. You mentioned Eileen Davidson, Don Demont from uh, uh, Bold and the Beautiful Now, previously. Uh, Peter Bergman from The Young and the Restless. Michelle Stafford from The Young and the Restless. Just a, a, a cornucopia of uh, yeah. soap stars. My name's not on there, but I'll be there too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is going to be a big event. If you are nearby or can come into the area, it's www is it a dot give dot classy dot org slash daytime, daytime unites for a l s 
So go to that website for tickets and information. This is going to be a huge event. If you can go get your tickets in the area, please go do that now. Yes. And next up, we have a few reminders for um, some other fan events and gatherings of your favorite stars. Um, first up, we have Matt and Melissa. Again, we talked about that's um, a Zoom with uh, Matt Ashford and Melissa Reeves on um, April 24th. Tickets and information go to eventbrite.ca. Then we have the Hot Men of Days Nashville event, again, happening September 28th to 29th. All tickets and information, you can go to Star um, Star, Image, Star Image Entertainment. <laughs> then again, the Day Players Band, I know they just played over the weekend, but they've been adding more and more dates. Um, and again, in addition to the dates where they are playing and giving you a live show, they're also incorporating um, these fan events where they're having more private dinners with um, fans. So it's a great opportunity to kind of sit down and spend a little bit more quality time with them. Tickets and information, you can go to thedayplayersband.com. Then we have our friend of the show, Mr. Teo Penglis. He wrote a book, Seducing Celebrities, One Meal at a Time. He is doing a book signing and a little um, sort of meet and greet on Wednesday, May 22nd, 7 p.m. in the L.A. area at The Grove, um, Barnes & Noble at The Grove. So if you are available, this is also a free event. Um, you can sign up for uh, Eventbrite. This one is, yeah, eventbrite.com. So yeah, Usually the way these... Sorry, usually the way these book signings go is you have to go buy the book, get a wristband uh, before the event starts. Mm -hmm. um, right? Isn't that how these, these work? Um, you I don't know. I don't know if it's that or if it's going to be kind of like um, what um, remember James Lott doing Jr. did one with Sean Cannon. So mm -hmm. that was just like an open kind of pan. Yeah, we're not sure if it's if it's a traditional book signing. All right, I'm guessing he's, it says a discussion. So I'm guessing mm -hmm. there'll be a time where he's probably going to sit down with someone and kind of go through a little bit of the book, the origin, yeah. the genesis, and probably, um, yeah, share some stories. So, and if you know anything about Teo, he is, he loves to entertain. He's and, got stories. Yeah, he does. So go check that out if you're in the LA area around that time. And last but not least, we have the Samantha and Friends events. We have the um, Enchantment Under the Sea. That one is the weekend of May 4th through 5th. And then we have the Golden Age of Hollywood. That one is happening the weekend of September 14th and 15th. All tickets and information, you can go to samanthafriends.org. Yeah. All right. And that is it for... News and Gossip. Yes, and before we head out, we want to give you a sneak peek of what's to come on this week's episodes of Days of Our Lives. So, Constantine and I are getting married. What? If that bastard killed his ex-wife, there's no telling what he might do to me. Take a peek and don't blink. You stay the hell away from my husband. You're getting too big for your britches. My God, I wish he was on the menu. You're like totally over him, right? I found out they're paying for Leo's room here. Hey. Hey, good to see you. Hey. Digs of our lives. Okay. Mm. All right. All right. We're getting some movement in there. <laughs> Abigail Klein's face in I that. I know. <laughs> like, brilliant. For what? Like, if what the fuck was a still image what? that would. Is that your, you've already got your, it's a gift, Araceli. You've already... what, 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 what the, what? You know what? Lots of questions. Um, hopefully next week we'll answer some of them. Mm -hmm. But it does look like a really good week. So yeah, yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. And that, yeah, that wraps up our show, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> where, where can they find, where, where, and you know. <laughs> you can find us, you can find Michael. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at ML Mattis. Can Justin. find me on Instagram at Justin Lee Harold. Find Araceli. On Instagram and Twitter at TA323 Araceli. You can find all of us social media on Dish and Day Show on Facebook, at Dish and Days on Instagram, and Dish and Days on X and Threads. And you can find Tony everywhere yes. at Lounging with Tony okay. if you so please. Uh, because we know, I saw a comment in here. By Tony? Andrea, Andrea Jean O'Brien. I miss Tony on the evening's dish and days. It had to be said. You know, sometimes a girl has to have a life. So, yeah. and Tony's <laughs> having a life. So, but he will be back along with 
the rest of us <laughs> next week when we give you yeah. an all new yes <laughs> an all new episode of Dish and Days. Yeah. All Take right. care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.